Hey guys, it's Carl. We're here right now in Apple campus just checking out the new watch OS 9 updates that was just kind of released. Probably the second largest big update uh, that we heard today. The first one obviously being iOS and the juicy hardware updates that we saw the new MacBook Air and technically the MacBook Pro 13 inch which didn't really get as much love as I think it should have. But anyways, these are the new watch OS 9 updates that should be coming pretty soon. So because this is more of a software update, we're still basing it off of the Series 7 design. I'm sure when the new Series 8 drops, I still think it'll have the same design just because this one came out uh, last year. So we will get four new watch faces. The first being Astronomy, the second being Lunar, tied to things like Lunar New Year. So depending on uh, what area you're from, I know Chinese New Year is a big thing. Shout out to uh, Team Dragon. 88s out there. I just give away my age. The third being Playtime, super playful looking face. They collaborated with an artist for that. And the fourth being Metropolitan. The next update is coming to the workout app, which is I think a big reason why a lot of people get Apple Watches. So you can now track your running or there are three new metrics to track your running style. So the first being vertical oscillation. So if I can run here with my bad ankle, typically when people run, if you spend too much energy running up and down, you have a non-efficient stride. So it does that by tracking your movements with your arm to let you know that your oscillation is too high. You probably have to reduce that to have a more efficient stride. The second being stride length and the third being ground contact time. Little nerd moment here, uh, say for Usain Bolt, he spends less time on the ground because every time you make contact with the ground that provides friction and that actually slows you down, reducing your momentum. So if you wanna be a pro sprinter, less time on the ground, less vertical oscillation, which is what I struggle with. And um, I guess stride like the larger your stride is, technically the better. We all wanna be Usain Bolt. The next addition is the inclusion of heart rate zones. And I know a lot of people base their workouts around a particular heart rate range based off of percentage of heart rate max. So again, a little bit of a geek moment. I took this in school. So 220 minus age is your typical max heart rate. You wanna work at around that 80% max heart rate zone to get a really good workout. And the watch will give you a notification when your heart rate is too high, approaching that near max heart rate zone or that 80 to 90% and let you know when you need to take a rest. And then once again, when you're able to perform work again. And the last inclusion I think for specific type of people that do triathlons, now when you're doing the activity, it switches between running, cycling, or being in the water swimming, which I always thought was the hardest for triathlons. Um, any triath triathletes out there, let me know what's the hardest. Definitely swimming. The next thing which I thought was really cool, we all know that uh, having an Apple Watch helps track your fitness, helps track caloric expenditure, but for all people that don't have an Apple Watch, I know that you can track things like daily steps on your iPhone, but now your iPhone will act as I would say a makeshift Apple Watch. It has an estimation of your caloric expenditure based off of what you're doing. You can now actually fill your rings just using an Apple Watch. Remember, it's not an exact measurement, more of an estimation, but it's great for people that haven't got into the Apple Watch space and perhaps wanna give it a try if you're working out with your phone and uh, still haven't made the upgrade to having a proper watch. The next update comes to sleep tracking. So you can now track or properly track different sleep cycles. So whether you're in REM, whether you're in a deep sleep or if your sleep quality isn't that good. I thought that was interesting because most people when they have an Apple Watch, you wear it all day and the time to not wear it and the time to charge it is at night so you could technically maybe charge it before you go to bed still wear it at night to track your sleep but uh, typically I think most people have this off of their wrist at the end of the day so if you do want to track sleep your watch won't be fully charged in the morning that's just something to keep in mind and the last big update still tied to health is around medications so now you'll get updates of when to take your meds when to properly schedule them and I think that's great for people that rely on medication for I guess their daily or need to take it daily for regular consumption and yeah that's pretty much all the updates coming to watch OS nine let me know your faves i'm really digging the fitness related ones especially the uh, stride length stride oscillation i love to geek out about those things but uh, we didn't see any new updates around colors around designs obviously this is more of a software update so i hope you guys enjoyed this vid and once again all other wwdc vids linked up and around this way make sure you're sub that's my shameless plug and hope you guys enjoyed this quick little episode peace <laughs>